Welcome back to another episode of It's Giving Sus. I'm your host, Danny Era, alongside my bestie, Meg West. Meg West. Meg West. <laughs> and we mean business today. We have a case that is cyber romance, just craziness, addiction, parenting, mental health, murder, brotherhood. Like it covers all. Like if we had the hashtags for the SEO, it would reach. It would reach everything. Yeah. This case has been covered so much. There's a lot of YouTube videos out there. But we just watched the documentary called Control Alt Desire on yes. Paramount Plus. I thought I knew this story, but now I know this story. I haven't even heard about it until this documentary, which is kind of crazy because it happened like right before COVID. I did not think it was going to go in that direction at all. Like I thought he was going to maybe like stalk the cam girl or had something to do with her yeah not where it went it at went all. so derailed yes it really it really did why we're covering this story is because we finally hear from grant amato the murderer yes or what do you say not not the victim but like the perpetrator the perp the perp the perp <laughs> we I'm hear off that perp. we hear <laughs> yes we hear from grant amato for the first time, his own words. This documentary has been interviewing him for four years through prison phone calls and through illegal cell phones in the, the, the jail. Yeah. They're on FaceTime. Like, whatever the prisoners are doing, honestly, like, they're just out here FaceTiming. Crazy. With headphones and everything. Yeah. So off the jump, that just blew me away, that they got all of this footage, like, illegally while this guy's behind bars. And in one of the interviews, the, the documentary maker is like, oh, you got a new phone. How'd that work out? And Grant's like, well, I splurged a little bit. I'm like, what do you mean? They just have a menu? No. Crazy. Guards, man. The guards are the ones I've learned over multiple documentaries are the ones that bring this shit in. They ain't paying enough. No, dog. Pay these motherfuckers more. Yeah. They're bringing in shanks for these people. Like, they're bringing in all sorts of shit. It's wild. Someone just got busted in when I told you about that big bust that happened in, in the Inland Empire. There was a corrections officer involved in that and now he's arrested too because he was bringing fentanyl into the prison that's wild yeah it's all wild wow so let's get into this case there's a lot to unpack and i have a lot of thoughts and a mixed emotions and feelings about this so i'm excited to hear what you think because we usually sometimes have a different perspective and I need to, like, get this all out because it's all rent-free right now. Last week, we talked about it being therapy sessions. So. For you. Now it's my now turn. Now it's your turn. I feel like this is a one for both of us, though. We're, it's like a bi-weekly. We switch on and off. You know, like, sometimes I need it. I need it this week. Yeah, absolutely. This is such an interesting case. We have a real weird family dynamic from the jump. We have a family with three sons. One is the half-brother. And then we have Cody and Grant, who are two years apart. Grant is the younger one. They are inseparable. Yeah. Grant says in one of his interviews, I believe that me and Cody were soulmates. We we're going to live together forever. We were going to be everywhere together, like just the most... Okay. It's teetering that line of like, is this brotherly love or like, is this brotherly love? Yeah. Like, it's a lot. The obsession is, I, I feel like started with his older brother. He wanted to be like him. He thought that he was this super person and it was kind of reciprocal. Like the codependency was so real. Yeah. It wasn't just the one obsessed. Like, I feel like they were both like together. They went into the same uh, nursing program. They applied at like the exact same time. They sat Both next to in. each other in school. Yo. And their plan was when their parents retired, they had a vacation home in Tennessee. So the parents were going to move there. And then the guys were going to buy the house and just be bros forever. Broing it up. It didn't turn out that way. It yeah. really did not. Together, not forever. No. Together for in our a little hearts. bit longer. In our hearts. <laughs> yeah. So this obsession and this like little brother syndrome of trying to like live up to 
these high expectations. The father put a lot of pressure on these kids for doing like a, just being successful, really. Yeah. I think when things started going wrong in Grant's life, all of this like mounting pressure started to build up and contribute to maybe some of the reasons that he decided to do what he did. Yeah. Do you recall anything from like childhood or upbringing or like the parenting dynamic that like stood out to you? I had instant red flags. Yes. I just the dad. It's just the dad. I feel like I feel like the mom really was supportive. And I think the mom did try to help Grant in the best way that she could. I really do think it was the dad who really kind of fucked him up. Yeah. But supposedly the dad never put hands on them. It was very verbal. Just very like systematic and anal. A noose. A noose. <laughs> yes. Anal, to say the least. The boys are really into like boy stuff. You know, they like yeah. playing airsoft guns and they do simulations of shootings and they play video games. Uh, they do, they like anime. Very into guns though, too. Very into guns. Red and flags. We are talking Florida. What did the guy say in the documentary? Guns shine state? I, was, I like, was just going to say that. I was like, dude, that's crazy. Instead of the sunshine state, it's the gun shine state. And he didn't miss. No, he did not. He said that with his whole chest. Oh, and I'd never heard anything more real. So true. The gun shine state. Mm-hmm. God bless America. Yeah. So this is a Florida case. Just, just to preface everybody, we know what we're getting into when, when we're talking about Florida. Yeah. Some weird ass shit. They're going to be a nurse anesthetist, but they start just like as normal RN. Like you have to right. put in hours training. And I think that's what they were doing. That's what they were doing. Yeah. And they're like together, the same, like, all right, we're, I'm like up, I'm like equal with my brother at this point is, is what Grant's, uh, you don't think so? Maybe when they first get in and they first like get there. But I think what people started noticing is that Cody like was really good. He, you know, he was a good nurse. He was good with people. He knew what he was doing. When on the other hand, Grant really didn't. And I think that's, like, where you said where the rocks, rockiness started happening. Because I think Grant started realizing, like, oh, shit. You know, I'm not my – maybe I'm not my brother. I'm a little bit less than. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, maybe I'm not as smart as him or whatever, you know. But I feel like there was definitely some animosity starting at that point. I feel like because they were doing the exact same thing, same school, same time. Like, Everything. that's so much more pressure to, like, try and be your brother. When if he went into a different field, you're not directly comparing, like, your brother's success to like your field because it's different. You're not in the same environment on the same work schedule. Maybe he's getting paid more like you or just working in a different set a place, just another place. You have dude. Some, uh, some like separation of like, OK, I'm not directly comparing myself to like my coworker slash brother that I'm admiring to be. Yeah, they're also 29. And Cody, the big brother, is two years older. So he's 31. Grant is 29. They're at home. They have no plans of leaving home. Yeah. It's just very like, I don't know, man. I'm a little bit uh, biased here with family dynamic. Same. But to me, and you're making great money and you have no plans of leaving home. Why? And then they want to complain about how strict the dad was. Mm -hmm. Why? Why are you still there? Yeah. Like, leave the nest. Like, what is this codependent family incestual relations going on not incestual but like they're too intertwined yeah even if you go and move out with your brother at least get away from your just parents. down the block yeah i don't know weird off the jump i just ugh, it's very complicated just what because like Say i'm it. so jaded i know i'm so fucking jaded but to me i wanted nothing but to leave my home my hometown my home state there's nothing more like you could not pay me billion fucking dollars to go back right hell no right and that's where i'm at too so maybe that's maybe maybe i don't to know to me i'm seeing flags yeah you could be close to your parents but like i feel like there's like a certain line yeah you know like you can talk to your parents every day you can have a good relationship with them do you need to be up each other's asshole 24 7 do you know what this person's doing every fucking second of their time and day and whatever i just think there's just there's just a line there's just a line right especially they're they're finishing up school they're making good money already like they're hitting 30 like don't you guys want 
girlfriends, boyfriends, a life of your own, whatever. Yeah. Just um, flee the nest. And you don't even have to go far. Live down the road. Live like 10 minutes away. Honestly. What, whatever. Just have your own space. But when things are working, he said, uh, Grant said in the interview, I never had to worry about anything. And that, I get that. These boys, at least Grant, very much gives me the impression that he didn't want to grow up. And why would he? Why would he have to? He had everything. I think he was enabled. A thousand percent. Maybe not so much by the dad, but the mom. Because right. like I said earlier, she really did try to help him. Yeah. Like, this is a case of affluenza. You remember that, I don't know, the case was a while back, but the kid, like, was driving the car drunk with the friends, and then he crashed, and it's like the Murdochs, basically, right? Mm -hmm. Like, these rich kids, they don't have, like, much shit to worry about, and they're, it's all going to work out. It's all going to be fine. Fuck it. Yeah. Fuck it, we throw someone off a boat and kill them, you know? Exactly. You know? Red flags, the whole family dynamic, a bright future, really, for this this whole family. Like, yeah. they have their retirement home. The boys are doing their thing. It's, it's going well. We find out shit hits the fan with Grant's career. Yeah. He was charged with theft of some of the drugs in the hospital. And it's interesting that that's what his charge was because that's not what he was doing. Mm -mm. I mean, technically, in a way, in a loophole, he was stealing drugs. Yeah, and just... Giving it to other people. Administering <laughs> them to people without consent, without being a doctor. And these are the drugs that killed Michael Jackson. They're extremely potent. And it's called propofol. Propofol, yep. Grant's excuse was that the people, like, the people were, like, not, like, calming down. He and he, like, quiet. he didn't know, like, what to do with that. Shh. Shh. Night, night. Go to sleep. Good night. Good night. Like, what? <laughs> And you and, need to be quiet. Yeah, it's quiet. You to, no. Your your fucking health and pain is just too much for me, dog. And he's gonna be an anesthesiologist. Good night forever. I cannot. Um. So fuck, man. Mind blown. Beth, the hospital doesn't do anything because why would they? Why would the hospital charge anything more than he was stealing medication? They are not bringing up the whole gambit because that's lawsuits. That's bad credibility. That's the board, the state coming in and. The whole thing. So hospitals cover up that shit. We know that. We've seen that. Yeah, like the- The killer nurses. Death nurse or night nurse. Yeah, yeah. And surgeons even. I've heard multiple things about surgeons, a gynecologist over at Columbia University for years. <laughs> Fa foul. We can't. Foul. They cover it up. Mm -hmm. So he's charged with stealing medication. He is, he has a felony. So he's no longer able to work in that field. Everything that he's worked for, the striving to be like the brother, it's gone. Yeah, and he was let go, right, too? Yeah, he was let go. He cannot, whatever. He tries to get another job in the field and, or anything. And he says that he can't because of this new felony. Mm -hmm. So he starts doing video games and streaming on Twitch. Yeah, he starts to do, which is cool. Not 100%. That's what you're into. It's, it's easy to do now. The documentary presents it as all of these things have happened and then he's pretty much at home and starts streaming and he stumbles upon cam girls for the first time what a great discovery i'm sure that was for him it'd be like seeing like colors for the first time right like your first pair of boobs and like who knows maybe he knew about it before but this is how it's the timeline is presenting itself he goes on to a streaming career he stumbles into webcam girls the first one he finds, falls in love with. Tell us about his experience with Sylvie. Oh, my God. He just dumped money on her, dude. And I think he, in his brain, was like, I love this girl. And I think in his way of showing his love, he was, like, giving her money. But then there was a weird-ass fucking, when he, when he answered this one question, I was like, What? So, like, he said something like, I liked being in a community of men also that we all had the same interest. Like, we all loved this girl. We all wanted to, like, put our time and money and effort into this girl. And then we connected. I was like, what the fuck are you saying? Bro, like, you want to connect on, with men on a, on a, on a sexual level? Like, because you're, you're literally admiring sexually the same woman. Men, all, dude. All jacking off to her, I'm sure. Men. 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 Period. Let's put our, let's just do a little circle jerk. Why don't we all just put each other's dicks a in our hands? A virtual circle just, jerk. Just, literally, that's what I'm 
I'm just picturing a bunch of nasty men in front of a computer screen jerking off of the same person. And this guy finds community in that. Excuse it, Enough where he wrote them letters saying letters. I lied to you. Whatever. We, we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. He, yeah, I don't know. Just weird things. But he, I think he, he truly did think that he had a, a relation, connection, a relationship. relationship. Yeah. Love this girl. So they interview these other webcam girls. And a lot of them say that their clients want this girlfriend relationship they if anyone anyone can go look up porn anyone can go see what they want to see but to actually have like an intimate connection these girls are calling them they're writing them letters yeah. they're asking them where were you you weren't here yesterday just like when when you stream or you do a live you make a connection with the people following you here's the catch to talk to sylvie for four hours cost twenty five hundred dollars I don't think there was really much free stuff going on. Like, you don't really get access to that for free. And when they went through his bank statements, he was, like, stealing his dad, his brother's card. He was using his mom's card. And he was giving her $500,000 at a time. No. Total he spent was 210000 Oh. In six oh, was, months. Maybe it was 5000 5000 It was 5000 Like, 5000 a night. Sometimes he did 20000 a night. I'm like, what? Yeah, a girl's gonna act like she fucking likes you. I like you too, dog. You could be the you could have a fucking tumor the size of a baseball on your face. If you're giving me five thousand dollars, twenty thousand dollars. I love you. I love you. I love you. We're we're forever t- together forever. Unseparable. Forever. Inseparable, inseparable, inseparable. Uns- all of it. We're together. It. We're, we're, we're together. We're like we've, this dog. we've imprinted. <laughs> like we are bonded. You know what I mean? Yeah. A couple of topics come up with this situation. Addiction, sex work, and murder. <laughs> I don't know what the third one's going to be. <laughs> I was just making shit up. But I really want to touch on um, how this series presented this sex worker and cam girls and the online relationship space. Because a lot of people originally wanted to blame Sylvie wanted to say, well, she like hustled him, wanted to say like she had some fault in this. And Sylvie was working. And I really like how this series highlighted the more than just I'm naked on camera. It showed the girl actually talking to one of her clients saying, well, you should get some therapy. You know, you're going through a hard time. Like these girls are really even if they're faking it, they are caring in a way and trying to like guide these followers in a good direction, at least the one that they highlighted. And I really wanted to bring that up because obviously the stigma of like sex work and how that could easily be to blame for this whole situation and sensationalize when in reality, it's not all just guys watching a girl get naked yeah they're like you said it was it was a community that he felt as twisted and sick as it was he had a fellowship around him exactly of like-minded people and it said he said that that made him feel not so alone so as weird as it was like that seemed like a positive thing in his life and again i just appreciate the way that they gave a further deeper in insight into that world than just saying like, oh, she was a Kim girl, like, um, whatever, gets sends videos for money, right? Like, I just appreciate that. And we can work on breaking that stigma. I think the one girl they interview even says she's like, you know, we come to care about some of these people, too. Like, you know, we're talking to them every day. We know parts of their lives. Like, it, it, I'm sure it's hard not to form some what of a connection to certain people when you're talking to this person four hours plus a day. I and mean, it's your livelihood. Yeah. It's kind of, like I was a bartender before and like I had customers that came in every day and like weren't my favorite people, but I'm like, where's, where's Jimmy? You know? Yeah. Where's, yeah. You, you worry about Where have you been? You want What's not going worry, on? but you right. wonder about these. People. You do. And then when they come in, you're like, where have oh, you been? Oh yeah, there you are. Yeah. Like you, you almost have to. Like, you don't have a choice. You're, like, connected to these people in a way. Yeah. After spending so much time. So, and then if it's half hustle, half, like, I actually do care about you, doesn't matter. The no, guy is feeling cared about, right? Like, I'll, I could fake care about you for 20K a night. That sounds pretty good. Mm-hmm. I care so much. Mm-hmm. Tell me everything, baby. <laughs> yeah. What, what you need. I'm <laughs> what here for ails you. you. I'm here for you. Like, 
So then we get into the addiction point because all of this has happened within six months. He finds Sylvie online. He starts, he spends all of his money. Then he starts stealing money from the credit cards. He starts taking out like fake credit cards. And this just spirals into $200,000. I want to talk about addiction because in the documentary, I, I can't really remember. Maybe it was the older brother. Someone they interviewed, they said that he, Grant, didn't care enough to stop his addiction. And that's just not how addiction works. He could have cared. He could have loved his family more than anything. But that's what addiction does to people. It, you have to get that fix of whatever it is. And that comes first. It doesn't mean that you don't care. It doesn't mean that you don't love them. You are stuck mm -hmm. in that. You are so deep down in a hole that you have to do what you have to do to get out, even if it's for five seconds. It doesn't mean that you're heartless. It doesn't mean – it means you're sick. Yeah. And you need help because yeah. you can't get out on your own. So I do like that they touched on that aspect just a little bit, but there's so many layers to what actually contributed to the acts that were committed. And I think that's a hard thing too because I think like the mom was sort of an enabler. Right. As well. When everything comes out that all this money has been stolen, they go and get him treatment. It's a 60-day program. It's going to help with addiction and mental health across the board. Cody pays for, for Grant to go. Pays $15,000. Grant stays for 12 days and then tells his parents to come get him. The facility said that I was just like going through a phase and in like a low spot and I'm doing much better now. Yeah. Grant says his mom would sneak in her phone and let him yes. talk to Sylvie, the cam model, while he was in treatment. The enabling, the codependency, it's such uh, an incestuous disease, really. It just addiction or any of this mental health stuff, just spider webs through the whole family. Yeah. And like, I can see it because I've been a manipulator I, in my addiction. Mm -hmm. I would tell my mom anything. Like, if you don't smuggle my phone in treatment, I will. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I can totally see him manipulating his mom to get what he wanted. Because obviously he was going to stop at nothing to be able to talk to Sylvie. Mm -hmm. I mean, he just wasn't doing well. It wasn't looking good. Yeah. Really. He gets out of treatment. What's he do that night? You, we already know. Steals a credit card. Talks Sends to, money. Talks to Sylvie. Yeah. But, like nothing has changed. But the dad comes through with a stack of rules, what you can and cannot do. And it's like you can't have a phone that has Wi-Fi. You can't have texting. They like locked up the bank accounts, changed the passwords on the computer. And the dad emails Sylvie. Do you remember that? No. Yeah, the dad broke into the computer while he was in treatment and emails Sylvie and says, my son has been lying to you about everything. This is not his life. He doesn't drive a BMW. He doesn't have all oh this money. Oh, my God. Money. Yep, 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 yep. So then, allegedly, when he gets out, Sylvie gives him a chance to redeem himself and come clean about everything. And that's when he wrote the letters to the other guys in the group. So the dad is like, all right, it's military time. You're in lockdown. Like, we're done with this shit. I'm done with your shit. Or you can hit the road. He doesn't choose to leave. He chooses to stay. And then he has to play by these strict rules. Yeah. Didn't last long. He lost shit pretty quick. Grant even said in the interviews that after, like, all those rules and everything, and he didn't really have, like, anything to live for, everything that was even bringing him joy, which was that group and the webcam girl, it was taken away, so he really didn't have much to live for. And that's when he thought about killing his family for the first time. Yeah, they got him for premeditated, which is fucking insane. Definitely not a crime of passion. Mm -mm. It could have been, though. I feel like it was a mix. Tell us what ends up happening, what, what he ends up doing to his family. He literally shoots them all execution style in the head. But the mom was playing Candy Crush on her computer. Yep. He walks in, gun back of the head, boom dead and he said it's not like the, it happens in the video games no buddy this is real life no they don't respawn We're no there's no reboot there's no med pack yeah he said it was very tactical so just very to the point this is what i'm gonna do executed it 
And then he leaves the house. Well, he unlocks his iPhone. And they needed a fingerprint password. He uses his dead dad's finger to unlock the phone. Takes the brother's debit card. Spends $600 talking to Sylvie in a Publix grocery store, whatever they are, Florida mm-hmm. shit. Because they had the, he said they had the Wi-Fi active even when the store was closed. Yep. Just, I'm going to go talk to her now. I'm just committed three murders. I'm just going to. Like he couldn't. I'm just, just going to go talk to my girlfriend now. Yeah. Girlfriend now. Right. There's. I just. The the sheer delusion that you have to be in to think that this girl loves you. And I that's why I really, really wanted to talk to her. And I'm sure that she is feel, feeling perhaps some guilt because maybe she has swindled this guy. I know a lot of it is acting. A lot of it is hustling and developing these relationships. And if knowing that you did that with the intention to get money, not to reciprocate love, and then the person does this heinous act, you could feel some guilt. Absolutely. Plus, her name has been blasted everywhere. Her pictures, her career. Like, it. Yeah. But it's also not her fucking fault. Like. No, not at all. This man is, first of all, old enough. Second of all, he's smart enough to at least get accepted into school to be a nurse anesthetist. Right. He's smart enough to be a nurse. You're not smart enough to realize that there's hundreds of other guys doing the exact same thing and you think that this girl cares about you? Dog, you think this girl cares about you. And then I'm sure in his head this was like some fucking whole relationship. I'm sure he I'm sure he made up shit in his own head and he let that roll. Because like he wanted to escape how much of a failure he actually was. Get up and fucking do something about it. Don't be a whiny bitch. And it's all sorry, because this- of him. It's him. If he didn't make that decision to illegally drug his patients, he'd be chilling. Yeah. Infinite cam girl money. Yeah. Dumbass. And he's like, Sylvie never required anyone to pay anything. These were gifts to her. You had to pay money to eat in there. Yeah, you couldn't you get in there. You had to buy tokens. Yeah, dog. Get out of here. Delusion. Just the sheer. Maybe he was smart enough to know this is, but I'm going to roll with it, like you said, because reality sucks. I relate to that. I relate to that, too. But I don't think I would make a whole really, I don't know. I guess I'm just. He took it so far. He took it so he rolled far. So he far. just created this whole scenario and whole relationship in his mind that was non-existent. But it's hard because when when the girl is almost reinforcing it, saying like the girlfriend role, doing the calls, do it, sending gifts, like. But they didn't talk outside of this app. No, they did. I thought I thought she sent him some little gifts and like, oh, however they talked, it was it, it was because of her work, but it was like. He may have realized that, yeah, this is like a hustle and like what they're supposed to do. But when you're getting the reinforcement of like, well, wait, I am talking to her extra or she did send me a little gift. He's brought in very soon after because Cody, his older brother, has never missed a day of work. He arrives early. He leaves late. They were supposed to sign in at seven, but they're allowed to come an hour early. So his coworkers don't see him there. And no call, no show, instant red flag. They start texting. It doesn't go through. It's an iPhone, so it goes green. And they're like, what the fuck? This never happened before. This is just so unlike him. Mm -hmm. So they do a wellness check. Yeah, they call the cops. They're like, the girl was like, I don't know how to do this, but I want to get a wellness check. And yeah. And then the police go to this house and find three people fucking shot in the back of the head. Yeah. And there's one. Well, there's technically two. That are still alive. Yeah. But the older brother has his own life. He's not living there with them. He is doing his own thing. But he is brought in eventually for questioning. But they track down Grant rather quickly. Yeah. In the interview, he is emotionless. Did you see a single tear? No. And he's smirking, which is the other crazy part. He doesn't give a shit. Right. 
And then they're investigating the scene. He moved his dad's body. He put his dad from face down. No, this was the brother. He put the gun in the thing. Oh, I thought that was on the dad. So he's fucking with the. He's trying to stage this whole thing. And then he wrote out a letter that was allegedly from his brother to him, from Cody to Grant, saying, like, I told you I would take care of the problem. The problem's taken care of. I just needed you back in my life. And, like, framing this whole thing that Cody killed the parents and then killed himself. Mm Mm-hmm. And, like, just looking at the crime scene, looking at the entry and the exit and the fingerprints and everything. Like, it's impossible. The craziest part is the gun that was put, first of all, like, the way it was put in the holster. Like, right. The, the woman did, like, the uh, demonstration. She's like, there's no fucking way. How do you shoot yourself in the head and put it back in the holster? Well, well, yeah, that too. And then the other thing was, like, the gun was never even fired. Right. So the one that was in the holster, if he committed, if he oh. did, if he did this murder-suicide, like, the There'd be shots fired. And there was blood on the body jeans under the holster, but no blood on the thing. So do the math. If it was on there during the blood, it'd be on top. It wouldn't be under. So he's trying to blame his brother, his soulmate, the person he wanted to spend the rest of his life with, literally. He's blaming him after he goes and executes his entire fucking family. What? And a lot of people are framing this as like he did that so that he could talk to this girl, right? Because they were stopping him from this. And I believe that to be partially true, but I also have some thoughts. And he says in the end, like, why? Like, what's the motive? Like, why? And it was the pressure, the, the rules, kind of everything boiled up to, I guess, he snapped. But to me, it doesn't really make sense that, like, he would cut off his money unless he was trying to get, like, life insurance or, like, those people were his money. Those people were bailing him out. Those people, like, he had a roof over his head. So why did he do it? Because he's cutting off his whole supply. He probably thought he was going to get freedom. He could have had freedom. He chose not to. He could have had freedom It's Jennifer. It's Jennifer Pan. Yeah. He could have had freedom at any fucking time he wanted. 29. He made those choices over and over again. This dude is just, to me, oh, man. I was like, what a psycho. What a fucking psycho. I get it. I trust me. We all have issues. We all have parents that treat us like shit. We feel inferior to other people. But to just, like, cut off the, like, emotional connection or, like, that you had that you sat here and like you said, talked about your brother and you didn't want to be separated, but you were able to shoot this motherfucker in the back of the head, turn his body over after he's dead. Frame him as the murderer. Crazy. This was right after the brother took Grant and their friend to Japan, paid for everything, just bros, and they did all the anime stuff and the time. They just had the best time. And then reality hits. Grant is still not feeling good enough. He's feeling less than because his brother is paying for this thing. And even to his parents' credit, like, yeah, they might have treated him like shit, but they still let him live in that house after all this. Yeah, even after stealing money from them and the whole rehab situation. And they, they didn't – they convinced the aunt not to press charges because he stole the aunt's credit card too. Yeah. The dad took out a second mortgage, started working longer. He's going to have to work a few more years. In, in, well, not to, anymore. Not, early <laughs> retirement. He's in retirement in the ground. But the the lengths they were going to keep this kid out of jail. He didn't want his son to go to jail to just protect him, to get him help, to do all of this. But also the enabling is so real. Yeah. Like there has to be a hard stop with like. You can't be smuggling in the contraband to your kid in rehab. That's crazy. Yeah. The smuggling is crazy. Mm hmm. But how manipulated was the mom? Because some real Norman Bates shit right yeah, there. Yeah, I don't know what that is. You're always telling me some weird ass story or book. Oh, you don't know what Norman. No. Okay, so he was like obsessed with his mother. 
Is this a real life story or uh, a book or a movie? It's a movie. Okay. Obsessed with his mother and he keeps her dead in the basement and he's like sets her up like she's alive in the window and like yeah just, just a little just mummy. Keeping mommy alive a little mummy mommy yeah, a little mummy mommy did he kill her yes why weird shit yeah weird some shit. weird shit yeah dude got it okay thank yeah. you you always have the sweeney todd and the i got the fun facts whatever one you told me last time with the brother yeah. and the shotgun it's given yeah it's all kind of adding up yeah we love it just we love Deranged. Reason 99 Deranged. to take my birth control today, really, truly. <laughs> yeah. Because you you can have a kid. You can give them everything, school, a place to live, love. We don't know about the love part, though. The mom. I the think love, the mom. yeah. The, the mom. The mom, 100%. But also, we don't. We don't know. Grant was even saying in his interviews, like, everything looked really picture perfect on the outside, but it wasn't on the inside. Yeah. And we're only knowing his side of the story because everyone else can't speak for themselves. So that's, you know, really interesting. Sylvie hasn't talked. Um, the other three people are dead. So who's really going to speak other than Grant to what happened and how their relationships were and what the family dynamic was? And, you know, he's a victim. He plays the victim and he feels sorry for himself. So who knows if his parents really even treated him that badly? I mean... The brother testified, though, the other brother who wasn't killed. Yeah. And, and did lay out that dynamic and read the – he had the, the actual rules that the dad wrote, wrote down. And in the trial, he went over some of those. So we do know that, like, that was real, at least from the, the rules he wrote and the, what, the brother's testimony. But those are just consequences of Grant's actions. Oh, I'm with you. You know, I am a hundred percent with you. Like it, it could never be my parents. They, the robbery, the theft, the lying, the. It, no, yeah. I would not be 29 getting my second mortgage pulled out of my parents' house and working more years. It would never be them. Go live in a box, bitch. Have fun. I would have been sent to jail for the aunt and the aunt that wanted to press charges. Absolutely. And also the whole poisoning and drugging the, your patients, that would have been an issue. I mean, right. Just, just a whole lot of sickness there. I don't want to victim blame. I don't want to no. talk ill of these people who were murdered. Right. But I just think the whole environment was toxic. Yes. And I think that that was a huge factor into the demise of this him family. seeking love elsewhere, him, all of it, just yeah. all of it. I think everything that he did was a consequence of his environment. Right. I and really it, do. It really shows you that, like, you don't have to be from, like, a troubled background to end up in these situations. And you don't have to, like, be – I mean, he's a rich white dude with both his parents and his brother who's educated. And this is happening. So – they do talk to Sylvie at the end. They get a translator. They get her on. Sylvie discloses that she has gone through so much trauma. She doesn't want to talk about this. She's gone through therapy. She's had a really, really hard time. Her life has been ruined because of this. And I don't know if that means because she really cared about this guy and then he was gone or her name's all over the internet. Her pictures are everywhere. Her everything is everywhere. And she got a lot of blame thrown at her. Well, this if this girl didn't do this hustle and try to get the money out of him, whatever, right? The whole thing, she's traumatized. Mm -hmm. And that's what that's what she says. And I, I don't want to, you know, I don't have no interest. I don't blame her. Right. And But look how she's handling it healthily, though. She's going to therapy. She's doing what she needs to do to deal with her trauma. It's like, why can't we all just do that and not murder our fucking parents and our brother? You know, just, you know, just take care of yourself. Just fucking take care of yourself. Yeah. And the sick and most twisted part of this entire three hour series is when the filmmaker goes and tells Grant, calls him and tells him, we talked to Sylvie. This is what she said. This experience changed me and, and traumatized me. And he just says, oh, that's interesting. Remember that part at yeah. the end? Yeah. I feel allegedly 
Like he is like, wow, she really did like me. Because why would that? Why would she be traumatized? Why would that fuck her up if she didn't? Mm -hmm. She cared. And you can, I can see it. Like wheels turning. He's wheels like, be turning. Interesting. And I'm toxic. Like I'm toxic. Like I, I've been in toxic relationships and I'm like, oh, that means he actually likes me. Like, bitch, you know, read between the lines. That is not what that means. Yeah. But you want, he wants to believe so bad. it. That's my takeaway and the vibe that I got when they told him that she had any sort of reaction. Also, she didn't say, I never want to hear his name again. I never want to talk to him again. Like, she didn't say any of that. Even when you're in that toxic mentality, though, if she did, he could think, because I've thought this before, wow, they like me so much or they liked or cared for me so much that they are, like, cutting me off. They can't even talk to me anymore. Right. Yeah. So the sick and twisted delusion is still there, in my opinion. Also, why he's in prison, he's just still doing webcam, girls. He's got a webcam gr cam girlfriend right now. And you know, the, I think the other craziest part of the whole thing was like, women feel sorry for me and I've gotten so many letters. So many, he goes, so many women have reached out to me. Are you all okay? Can we not reach out to murderers in jail? What the fuck? What is with this weird, crazy obsession? Like, oh, we want to fix him or, oh, he didn't do it. No, he fucking did it. What are we doing? Find a broken man outside of jail. There's plenty. Why are so, so many women, so many women? I want to know how many. Y'all are deranged as fuck. I need to find Stop. your addresses and send you therapy, bitch. The Gypsy Rose. Look how many letters she has. It's crazy. How many boyfriends and husbands. And there's people out here on the outside that can't that are normal, get in a relationship. That are normal. And we have people who are locked up just. They're just coming in, in by the dozen to date. This is like the first healthiest relationship I've been in in like 32 years. And it's just crazy to me. Like, I, I'm, not, I'm not like a fucking psycho fucked up person. I think I'm relatively normal to be able to find somebody to love me and take care of me, you know? Just stop writing men in jail, please. That's just so weird to me. That to me is like fucked up. Like, you know this man did that shit. Right. He even admits to the one friend. He killed his his, fuck, his, his si online cam girl girlfriend right now. Yes. He admitted to her. Yes. That he killed his family. And we also get an admission at the very end. Yeah. After this filmmaker has spent four years interviewing Grant, getting his jail time, bootleg, FaceTime. His Apple device in jail. It's, yeah. Just, just 15 Pro Max. Like, come on. It's crazy. He probably had a better iPhone than I do. No, God. literally. Like, he would... <laughs> The service was so clear. It was better than our remote better than podcast our Zooms. <laughs> Zooms. Like, what is this? Come on. Like, oh. shit. He finally admits it. He's like, I feel like it's important to you. You've spent four years with me to get the truth. And the truth is that I committed these crimes. He goes, I committed the murders. Is that, is that how he puts it? Or I committed these murders. Yeah. yeah and that's, that's what I'm in jail it. for right now. Yeah. What was your reaction to that? Because I know, like, they said something in the documentary about, like, how he, like, worded that. But I didn't really have a, like, I don't really see what's weird about saying it like that. Cold. I think it's cold. I think he could have been like, you know, I did, I did do those things to my family. Those things to my family. No, I murdered him. Yeah, you're right. I fucking shot him in the back of the head. <laughs> like, that's, that, but that's, like, the type of, like, vibe I was getting and, like, the coldness and, like. He's smirking. Dog, he's smirking. Yeah, I did that shit. What? What? You're you're proud? Like I'm so to I don't know, seeing all this too really makes me think maybe he was a, just a psychopath to begin with and he was drugging people before this. Before all of this. So was there something always wrong? Was he going to be killer nurse? Like was he like I feel like it was there. And we don't know much about, like, how he was as a kid. We don't I know don't. anything about his childhood, exactly. And he says, I couldn't think of a better way that I could have done this murder. And he says that he did this in the most empathetic way. Or what did he, he say? He says, I did it in the best way possible or something. He just said, I'm very um, altruistic. And yes, very that's what he says. He calls himself altruistic. And what else? He said another word, and it's such a good word and psychotic. I can't think of it. He said compassionate. 
he said, I did it in the most compassionate way possible because no one had their last thought being, wow, my son or my brother is going to shoot me in the fucking head right now. He just did it point blank from behind. So no such, one no one had that thought. Such and compassion. Mom's last thought was Candy Crush. Why are you laughing? I don't know. Sorry. That I'm just, just like, I, I guess he. But the Her co- candy's got crushed, the, you know? The, fuck. <laughs> the no. compassion. That's giving first degree murder because he thought that through. Like, I'm going to do this in the way that they're not going to see my face. Also, maybe he was just a coward. I think they did do first degree for him because I think he has life. Yeah, because it was premeditated. Because it was premeditated. Right. So, so he thought that out. He had that thought that I did this compassionately, meaning that he tactically, another word he uses to describe it, he tactically planned this out and he did it in the most compassionate way. Because he acts like it's a video game. Yeah. All these wannabe like cop SWAT military boys, like goodbye. Goodbye. Go enlist. Like you don't, like you want run around and wear camo and play your little games and run your little drills. Just go in go the military. They could never. That's no. That's the thing. Because they're too much of a pussy. But they want to be fake. They want to be rent a military. Or I forget. There's like a funny term for it. But, but like, they have big balls when they want to kill defenseless people. Big, big fucking balls then. I know. It's a whole brand and genre of man that's just beyond my comprehension, really. From the very beginning, I think I wanted to have compassion. <laughs> I wanted crazy. to have sympathy and compassion empathy. is crazy. <laughs> yeah, I know. Now I can't even use that yeah. word. Um, I wanted to have sympathy and I wanted to have empathy from him because, like, I know having shitty family dynamic and I know what it feels like. I know what it feels like to be gaslit. I know what it feels like to have abuse. But right. I just like I wanted to feel sorry for him in that Same. aspect, but like I can't just because of the way he's like acted this whole time, and then like just the sheer like delusion and. The, I don't know. Sometimes the way he talks about her is just weird, too. About Sylvie? Yeah. Like, almost like she was, like, an object. Well, yeah. I mean, because she... We are. Yeah. <laughs> Especially in that... In that realm. Work. Yeah. Because it's just a... It's just a girl online, right? Like, I don't have to... His. Yeah. I don't have to, like, ever see this person, interact with this person, like, in, in, in real life. It's giving incel. Yeah. It's weird. I also wanted to feel bad for him, too, because he is, like, he's not necessarily likable, but he's relatable in, like, the pressure to succeed, living up to your brother, and then one mistake, mistake, ruined his career, and and I can relate to that, Uh, but this mistake of the drugging people wasn't a mistake, like, you made that choice like you knew better like so I can't feel bad that like say like something happened he got like a DUI or like something traumatic and he became addicted to drugs like I can have more like understanding and compassion for that but when his whole life crumbled because of his bad choice to drug people I can't it's out the window I and, just, yes. there's none. And just stealing from your family. Right. <sighs> I mean, I've been there too, though. And to take from your brother who was only given to you. Yeah. Crazy. The last thing that he does is after he admits to the producers that he did these crimes, that's why I'm in jail. The appeal got denied. They're like, no way. So he's like, fuck it. I'm four years. I've lied. Here's my truth. They ask him, do you know where the murder weapon is? And he says, oh, yeah, it's under Blake. I forget the last name. Our, fr- our friend Blake's uh, big oak tree in the back. And they're like, all right. They go out, do a full search, metal detector, dig stuff up. They don't find anything. They get back on the call with Grant. And they're like, hey, uh, buddy, we went out there, looked for the gun. It seemed to be relocated. He's like, huh, weird. Smirking. Like, they ask him, are, are you being honest with us? Like, are you, you know, he's like, I'm really sick of people thinking I'm not being honest with me. He's laughing, he's smirking the whole time. And I'm just like, why, why, why did he do that? Just to fuck with him? 
Or did the friend dig it up, put it somewhere? I don't know. But why did he but do that? But the friend acts innocent because he's like, oh, I went to go clean clean my gun collection. And or, my gun was and missing. And the gun was missing. Yeah. And then the timeline gets a little blurry between when did he kill the family, go to the phone store, unlock the phone with a dead fingerprint, and then the call, like, comes in of, like, hey, like, Cody didn't show for work. He's online with Sylvie, and then you're to go to somebody else's backyard, dig a hole in the backyard without them knowing, bury a gun. Like, so the timeline's really kind of not there. So he either lied, <laughs> bless you, God, God, God bless America. God bless America. He either lied that it wasn't there, or it was there and someone moved it, or I don't fucking know. But the timeline is blurry with that. But he just sent them on one little wild other goose chase and... Yeah. May he rot in prison. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Yeah. Amen. Amen. A like, fucking man, dog. I don't I get it. I just think he's a piece of shit. I don't I really get do. it. I don't see, like, the motive. Like I said, the money supply is now cut off. The shelter, the people who cared about him, it's all cut off. Like, he just didn't want to follow the rules. Did he snap? Did he want to play his little military game out in real life? I think... He's a psychopath. I think that he had these tendencies when he started administering stuff to these patients. Uh, if, if it wasn't like this whole family thing, I think he would have intentionally murdered somebody in the hospital or something. Like, I don't know. Maybe allegedly that's just my gut reaction. Um, but he'll be in prison forever. God bless Florida. Yeah. They didn't give him the death penalty, they though. They did not. Which I was kind of surprised, actually. Yeah. I, there, you have to hit certain requirements to even bring that in front of the jury um, to try. But uh, apparently they didn't either. They did bring it to the jury, but the jury said no. Yeah, because they came out. I remember them. They're like, read the verdict, guilty. And then they said death penalty, no. Yeah. So I think they at least brought it to the table. I mean, I'm sure they're going to try. Yeah, the prosecutor will try for everything. But. I mean, what a horrible crime, right? Like, the entire family just slaughtered. I feel like people have been on death row for less. You're a 30-year-old man. There's a way you can find a way to get online. Let's be real. Move out? Or move the fuck out. Like, there's just so many Make other. your own money to spend it the way you want? Insane. Insane. Unexplainable. Inexcusable. Irrational. All of it. it. I'm out of it, the words with I. But <laughs> I was blown away in, at this. It's giving sus. Like, I doubt this is the last we hear from him. He's very popular. He's got all of his girlfriends. All these bitches. He's connected to the internet. <laughs> he might be watching this episode right now. Grant, if you're here. Comment. Leave a comment in the chat. I want to hear. Yeah. I want to hear from you, dog. Tell do you, us. Do you think us. we're pretty? <laughs> no, don't ask him that. <laughs> Oh, God. Oh, okay. God. The on pillow's this, off. On this note, <laughs> Jesus. Um, Send us $20,000 to our YouTube. $20,000 super chat yeah. would be great. Yeah, we'll take it. Yeah. Anything for the plot. Don't, because he literally might. <laughs> like, he's <laughs> delusional. <laughs> so am I. You know, that, that was take, my New Year's resolution. Hey, like I said earlier, I like you for $20,000 a day. You know? Yeah. It's like a publisher's clearinghouse. I have no bias against money. A a $1,000 a day for life. <laughs> yes. Make it 20 and we can, we can yeah, chat. Yeah, and then we'll take the YouTube down and shut the fuck up. Yes. Precisely. $20,000 and we'll. No, a day. A day. Like 20 million <laughs> up front. I'll take it down. Yeah. I'll shut the fuck up for 20 million. Absolutely. Period. <laughs> I'm just manifesting. Yeah. Truly. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of It's Giving Sus. We appreciate your comments, likes, shares, subscribes. It's free. This community so far is small but mighty, and we're having a great time doing this. We are in week 19. Crazy. Crazy, crazy. Uh, we're These not chickens going... are. You you guys tried to kill us off last week, but it, impossible. We'll yeah. be here. Yeah. For another episode every Monday. So please subscribe if you haven't done so yet. You can also listen to us on Spotify if you don't want to see. These, the chicken these money makers um but if you do we're here every freaking monday 
with another with another episode. Crazy that story. Blurs the line between the intriguing and the unsettling. And um with that, stay curious and stay skeptical. I have to say that again. I just <laughs> had a stroke at the end. So until next time, stay curious and stay skeptical. Thanks for watching. Bye.